Hi right, guys, Dave Man Max Six, and we're back with Dr. Rand. This is Ask the Doc. You're one of your favorite series online, you guys. Dr. Rand, welcome back to your show. Yeah, thanks for welcoming <laughs> me back. Always a pleasure to be here. So today we have a lot of questions, you guys, because it's been a while since I shot with Dr. Rand. We've been both busy, but we we finally made some time today for you guys. We have a lot of questions, and we're gonna try something a little bit different. Some of those questions are getting more and more complex and very interesting. Question, I actually sent you the question a day or two in advance for you to review, and you're like, oh my God, I'm loving those questions, right? Yeah. Oh, so, a lot more, um, I don't want to say advanced questions, just they're more fun for me simply because uh, they're not the standard, you know, what I call easy questions because I deal with this all the time. So I don't mean that, you know, the questions before were, were boring or dumb questions and anything like that, but there's some there's some interesting questions I noticed in this group of, I think we have 22. 22. That yeah. make it a little bit more fun for me. That's just because I don't get these kind of... Uh, uh, intricate questions as often and again just makes it more fun for me that's awesome so you guys thank you for watching the show as always and then uh, we're finding out that you know more and more of the smart people who really know about this stuff are asking more questions so we're very excited about it keep keep sending the questions you guys and we'll answer them as often as we can you know based on, on schedule uh, when, when it permits itself so and, uh, uh, that being said, because the, the, the questions are so much more complex for me to read, <laughs> I asked Dr. Ren, would you be willing to read and answer the question? So I'm going to let you have at it, Dr. Ren, and then uh, we're going to get started with question number one. And it's not a problem, but in all fairness to you, some of it is, I think, just the, the, the uh, I guess these are emails you get yeah. mainly or not yeah, text, email. right? Yeah. Um, you know, with when you're cranking these things out, I think some of the words are misspelled and the punctuation is off and it makes it a little confusing. I noticed even reading. So okay. I may be interpreting here and I'm going to take my best shot at interpreting properly. But if not, uh, if I don't do it properly, then please hit us back with uh, the question corrected, if you will. But this one starts, um, hey, Doc, great videos. Thank you. Uh, want to ask for your opinion, if I may. I started a testosterone enanthate cycle, I'm imagining, 250 milligrams twice a week but didn't have a hand, didn't have a Remedex for the first three weeks. I've got it now and took it three times, but my nipples are already swollen. Not much, but definitely visible and it kind of freaks me out. I asked around and because it seems I'm more prone to this problem, I should switch now to Aromacin. My question is, should I stop taking the test or the Aromacin will help my nipples get back to normal even if I continue taking the test. The next injection should have been yesterday. <laughs> I'm laughing just because this goes to my point. I know, and I do this all the time, there's some words missing here. Uh, let's see, let me just finish. The next injection should have been yesterday, but I didn't took it yet. So if you could please give me your advice if I should stop the test or is it safe to keep going? Thank you a lot for any information you can give me. So I think this boils down to started taking a testosterone ester but without taking something to block, as we call it, the estrogen, which is a problem, yeah. Because estrogen is made from testosterone, and when you have excess, quote-unquote, testosterone, um, you're going to make more estrogen. It doesn't even have to be excess testosterone. We all know that as, as males age, we make more and more estrogen from testosterone anyway. It's just the way we're built. You know, who knows? It's evolution has set us up that way, so we'd be more likely to stop running around and and raise the kids we've already fathered. I mean, who knows? But um, it does happen. What I find is when you do start to get to the point where you have gynecomastia, which is what I'm assuming the nipples are swollen from, um, uh, it could be from prolactin, but um, really that's a rarity. As much as the you know the the legend has it, I I've I've actually never seen high prolactin in all the patients I've worked with uh, be the issue. I, I win more bets that way. Um, and that's a story I won't ramble on as I'm prone to do. But, uh, you know, the people that use DECA always think that, oh, I, I've got prolactin problems. Nope, it's usually, no, it's always been an estrogen problem that I've seen anyway. Anyway, uh, aromacin, a suicide inhibitor is not going to be the answer to the problem. The answer to the problem is to get on something that sufficiently keeps your estrogen to a proper level, and that would be, uh, you know, we use estradiol as a surrogate marker for total estrogen, so we gotta get estradiol down to somewhere between 15 to 20 picograms per milliliter, per milliliter. We talked about the need for some estrogen, it's the excess estrogen that causes the problem. So we wanna nail that zone, it's not that hard to do. Um, I think the most elegant way of doing it is with a Remedex or any aromatase inhibitor because you're sparing the very thing you wanna keep, the testosterone, while not letting it even convert 
into estrogen, the thing that you don't want much of, just the right amount. Um, once you feel the gynecomastia, uh, normally it's, it's normally, usually it's too late. And I always say, you know, because I don't do them myself, but I've done many first assists where, you know, if you, if you palpate something that seems the size of a marble, when we get in there, it's closer to the size of a golf ball. Um, it's like an iceberg. Yeah, you just you you really don't realize how 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 big the nodule is once you get in until once you get inside, but it doesn't matter. I mean, what we found is there really is no link between gynecomastia and and breast cancer. Okay, uh, when I say it doesn't matter, it, it comes down to an issue of cosmetics yeah. uh, and pain. I mean, yeah. if they're tender. Yeah. So bottom line, what I get to is I put even though it will diminish the effect of. A Remedex on the body. There's a paper. I think it only reduces the efficacy of the of the Remedex by about 15%. But it's worth it. The first 30 days, if you have this sensation, block the receptors immediately with some tamoxifen. Okay. okay? Stay on your Remedex so that you're not converting and making more, you know contributing to the problem. But block the receptors ASAP. Stay on your Remedex and. Uh, you know, you're, you're asking, should you stay on testosterone? I'm assuming that you need to be on testosterone. Yeah. So, yeah, of course. Uh, just do it properly and avoid the, the, the this particular side effect. Um, so will the Novodax or Tamoxifen actually reduce the size of the... Uh, sometimes you can if you catch it early enough. Yeah, I don't mean to be a pessimist. That sounds really terrible. I yeah. just... It's just normally by the time you get to, to feeling it, oftentimes it's too late. You know, athletes, what what, what is our job? Pain yeah. management, right? You get in there and you work out yeah. hard despite it being... You know, your body's saying, hey, stop. So a lot of times people don't notice this is what I'm getting at until it's a little too late. But if this is like he, he, he just started and he just got these symptoms, um, first of all, it's kind of rare. If, if he's not palpating anything, then, yeah, jump on the Noble Dex uh, right away and see if uh, – the tamoxifen, sorry. And see if you can get rid of it. And um, I would do that again for a full month, 10 milligrams twice a day. Again, I'm not supposed to be giving out medical advice, so let me rephrase that. Uh, most of the people, you know, use that technique, right? Okay. Uh, um, and then, uh, you know, so I would st stay on the Arimidex, um, and, and I use one milligram every other day, um, to get the estradiol, which of course we use again as a surrogate marker for, for total estrogens to 15 to 20 milligrams is the goal, but start with the every other day until we do a 90 day follow up and make sure we got that nailed. I'd much rather over suppress to avoid something like this. Yeah. And 90 days of oversuppression of estrogen isn't going to make your joints hurt or, you know, make it so that your HDL drops, you know, a huge amount or anything like that. Um, and then we can adjust after 90 days to see, okay, where's your set point? Typically, by the way, and it's just typically, um, if you get to the point where you're suffering from, you know, gynecomastia, your estrogen is pretty high. Because I've seen really high estrogen before people even get gynecomastia. Normally, it's the water retention and the moodiness and irascibility that occurs first. And then you see this sort of thing. Again, I'm talking about typical. It doesn't mean that you might not have a prolactin problem in this case. So, um, you know, let's see how... Typically, I would see how the, the tamoxifen worked right away. If it doesn't beat it down within a week... And we go, okay, let, maybe it's time to get labs and see what's going on here. Maybe it is an issue with prolactin. This one starts, uh, oh, wait a minute. It starts above it. I'm sorry. I just noticed the bolt. So let me start from the beginning. Uh, hello. So for the last couple of months, I have become addicted to researching steroids. I'm 21 years old, and I'm looking to find out as much information as I can before I start a cycle. The only side effect that worries me is the same as that of a lot of other people the hair loss. I don't have any signs of male pattern baldness, but it does run in my family, so there is a chance. I just wanted some extra information on the way testosterone speeds up hair loss. What This is the bold part. What I want to know is, one, since I don't really want to use finasteride because of its side effects, if I started a cycle and noticed hair loss, could I just stop the cycle after one pin? One injection, I guess. Yeah, PCT or whatever, th that would be that. Hair would grow back and I would have only lost a few hairs. So he's hoping if he stops early enough and he does PCP, he'll go back to normal. Got it. Okay. I think. Or will it accelerate my male pattern baldness a few years and cause me to continue to lose hair even after PCT? 
All right, let me just answer them because he's got them listed. One, two, three. He really cares about his hair. Um, well, hey, I appreciate that. We all want to look as best we can, right? Um, even if we're happily married and, and whatever. Um, okay, I'm 21 years old. So, again, I don't want to go into the stuff I've talked about. But, um, you know, it, I don't want to be judgmental at all. I just, you know, at 21 years old, unless you have gone through all the checking, uh, it's likely that you do not need hormone replacement therapy and you're running the risk of messing with your HPA axis development until you're at least 26 years old. But I'll answer the question as though this is all a given, okay? So um, finasteride. Finasteride, as we know, is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, so it blocks the conversion that occurs. Uh, in this case, finasteride blocks the conversion in the liver mainly of... Um, testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. There are other products such as dutasteride, it goes by the name of Abidart, which also blocks the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone more strongly uh, in other areas such as the hair follicle and the prostate, as well as the liver. So we've got different tools here. I just want to throw that out there because I'm not sure we've talked about that. And dutasteride is significantly stronger than finasteride, and there's a reason I'm throwing that out there here because uh, I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, but um, if you notice hair loss, it's typically not irreversible for as much as six months. And oh. this applies also to females who, you know, I get on hormone replacement therapy, and again, it has to be in their genes, but they'll start to notice, you know, or I usually get the, hey, I appreciate we talked about this beforehand, and I'm one of those 20 percenters, let's say, uh, that we referred to, but, you know, I spent $5,000 in laser hair removal, and I'm starting to get that hair back, you know. Hey, remember we talked about this? One option is we can just stop therapy outright, and usually I get the, well, no, never mind, okay, I'll just go get more lasers. Wait, well, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Or we have some other options. You know, there's ways to reduce, the, the culprit in the hair in the wrong places and losing hair in the right places is dihydrotestosterone. We've that's the best we know of to date, and I try and stay current on this. You go to any hair specialist, dermatologist, and they'll tell you, the protagonist in this is, is, is dihydrotestosterone. Of course, it has to be in your genes. You're not going to grow a beard if you're a female that doesn't have the genes to grow hair on your face. And you are going to eventually get male pattern baldness if it's in your genes. It's just accelerated right. by the exposure to DHT. Uh, at 21, I don't recommend any of this stuff, obviously, but uh, unless it's been proven that you know you're hypogonadal, but um, you can start using finasteride as soon as you start to see hair loss. I don't put people on uh, finasteride that you know are 50 year old males that are hypogonadal because it might not be in their genes. Now, when it comes to the prostate, if you live long enough, you're going to get enlarged prostate no matter what. But we can start to use finasteride or dutasteride or some, some other drug, if need be, to shrink down the prostate at that point, and then you're not taking something for, I don't want to say for no reason, but it's not out of conservatism sake, it's just why take it until you need it? Right. It's not a use it or lose it. If I haven't taken it, well, I blew it, and now i got to get the prostate rotor rooted down the road. It's, that, that's not the case. So would I take finasteride pro, uh, preventatively beforehand? No. Because just, as, just because someone in your family has it, it really doesn't mean, it may mean, no, it does mean you're more likely to get it, but it, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. And it's too early to tell. It usually starts to show up around age 30. Um, and it can mess with your development at age 21 of that HPA access, access. So, yeah, I'd err on the side of not using it for sure. Uh, yeah, until we're needed. Now, question number two is, um, oh, well, let me just finish. If he doesn't, I think I answered it, but, you know, if he uses it or doesn't use it, it's not one of those things where I will continue because I, I, I screwed up. No. It's, it's, it's quite linear in the sense that when you're using it, it blocks the DHT and stops the hair loss. When you're not using it, it will proceed as normal. It's not, oh, I should have used it, I didn't, and now I'm going to suffer three years of accelerated hair loss. Doesn't work that way. Mm. Um, I think that was the question he's asking. Yeah. Number two, if in the same situation, when I noticed hair loss, I used everything from Niz shampoo, possibly RU5841, and possibly even finasteride, 
would I be in the same case where my male pattern baldness is accelerated and hair loss would continue after cycle nine? I just answered that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, lastly, if I started finasteride two weeks before cycle and throughout cycle and during PCT, resulting in no hair loss, would I lose hair after the PCT hair loss accelerated? Just answer that too. It's, yeah. it's, it's a use it and it works. Don't use it. It yeah. won't work. He's okay. just trying to see if he starts delayed or before or right, after. Right. Yeah, it's the same question. Here's what I would say though. Okay. Rather than, and of course, some of it is going to cross into the bloodstream and become systemic. But there is something called uh, uh, lantanoprost, which actually is, a, if you will, a precursor to Latisse. Uh, Allergan, I think, has a license for Latisse, but there was a guy named Dr. Robert Nettles who somehow got the right, at some point anyway, maybe he doesn't have any more, to lantanoprost. He was uh, an ophthalmologist, I think, by trade, and noticed that when he was using this lantanoprost uh, for ophthalmolo ophthalmological reasons, the hair growed like a weed to the eyelashes. And he goes, wow, okay, we can use this to grow hair. So cut to the chase, Lantanoprost, which is less risky and, and, and much better than, in my opinion, Latisse, um, and I'm not, it's not just my opinion, you can look at the research uh, so I don't get in trouble, uh, but you apply a topical combination of dutasteride Okay, which works on the hair follicles better than finasteride does, and lantanoprost to protect your hair. And there and thereby you're not ingesting it, obviously, you're not exposing, you wouldn't ingest lantanoprost, but I mean the dutasteride, and you wouldn't get the systemic effects and screw with your system as much. Again, anything you put on topically, pretty much, excuse me, you're gonna get some systemic absorption, but this right. is a much better alternative than what he's proposing.